Hey guys, Alton here. First off, I want to say thanks for checking out my YouTube channel. Now, in today's video, we're going to go ahead and take a look at one of my selected lectures from my eight hour introduction to Windows Server 2016 for beginners course. So let's go ahead and let's get into it. In this video, we're going to create our two different virtual machines that we'll be using in this course, our Windows 10 and our Windows Server 2016 virtual machines. Now go ahead and open up VirtualBox. And then when it's open, I want you to go to File and Preferences because I want to show you where by default VirtualBox stores the virtual machine settings, all the information regarding them, as well as the virtual hard drives for those machines. By default, it's on your C drive. Now, if you have more than one hard drive, I'd recommend putting them somewhere else. I have multiple different hard drives on this system, so I have a specific drive I set up that I'm going to store these virtual machines on. So if you have more than one hard drive, I'd recommend doing that as well because these machines are going to run a little bit faster. And in fact, the drive that I have set up as a secondary drive that I'm going to use for these virtual machines, it's a solid state hard drive. So it's definitely going to be a lot faster than running everything on the C drive where my host operating system is running as well. So to change that, we just simply click here for the down arrow, choose other, and then scroll down to where your drives are. I have a solid state drive, my E drive. I'm going to choose that. I'm going to select a folder. So I'm going to create a folder and I'm just going to call it VMs for virtual machines. And then I'll double click to select it. And you'll notice that it's selected up here and it's also selected down here. So we'll say select folder and there you go. Everything has changed. So now when we click OK, all the new virtual machines that we create are going to be by default. They're going to be placed in that folder. So now that we've done that, let's go ahead and let's create our virtual machines. So a simple way of doing so is simply just clicking on this new button. You can go to that menu over here and do it, but we have this nice big button, so we'll just use it over here. So let's start off with our Windows Server. So I'm going to call mine Windows Server 2016, and you'll notice that the machine folder is at E drive, and the version, it auto-selected it based upon what I typed up here, it auto-selected Windows 2016 64 bit. If yours didn't, just go to the drop down and choose Windows 2016 64 bit. Select Next. Now it's going to ask you for how much RAM you want to allocate, how much memory you want to allocate. And that's going to depend on how much RAM you have on your host machine. I have 12 gigabytes of RAM on this system, so I'm going to bump this up. If you only have 8 gigabytes, I would just leave it at two gigabytes for this machine. But because I have 12, I'm gonna go ahead and choose four gigabytes. And I'm gonna select next. And now we do need to create a, a hard drive. So we're going to leave this at default for create a virtual hard disk now. We're gonna say create. It's gonna ask us for the format, leave it at VDI. Don't change anything. Select next. And by default, it's dynamically allocated. I always use dynamically allocated. With dynamically allocated, it's not going to use the entire amount that you're going to say that the size of the drive is. It only uses as much as a virtual machine needs. So it's more efficient in terms of hard drive space usage. So keep that at dynamically allocated. Select Next. And then it's going to ask you for the size. Now, the minimum for Windows Server is 32 gigabytes. We want to have more than the minimum. So let's say 40 gigabytes. I think 50 is a bit excessive for what we're going to be doing in this course. And 40 is, you know, it's a nice number in between 32 and 50 gigabytes. So we'll just choose 40 gigabytes and say create. And now it's going to create our system. So we've created our Windows Server 2016 virtual machine. And now later in this section, we can use this virtual machine to install our operating system on it. Now we're not done with the video. We need to do our Windows 10 machine. So we're going to choose new. And we'll just type in Windows 10. And you'll notice that it auto selects Windows 10 64 bit as well. And if it doesn't auto select, Windows 10 64 bit, make sure you choose Windows 10 64 bit, not Windows 10 32 bit, because we're going to be installing the 64 bit edition, the enterprise edition. So we're just going to go through the exact same process as we did as the Windows Server. Select Next. 
For the amount of RAM for Windows 10, it's not going to need as much RAM. Uh, I could give this 4 gigabytes, but I'm only going to give it 3 gigabytes because I'm also recording videos while I'm creating these virtual machines and I'll be running them at the same time. Um, you're not going to be creating videos, so if you want to give it more RAM, if you have 12 gigabytes, then bump it up to 4 gigabytes. That would be perfectly fine. And then again, if you only have 8 gigabytes of RAM, then leave it at default. So let me go ahead and change this to 3 click next click create for the hard drive click next leave it at vdi and click next leave it at dynamically allocated and then for the hard disk space we'll just make this one 40 gigabytes as well we'll say create and now both of our virtual machines are created now before we end this video I want to show you a couple different things so let's go into settings it doesn't matter which machine you choose go into settings and you'll get this pop-up and this is all the different settings for your virtual machine now i simply just want to go into the system area because i want to show you a couple of different things in here so you may find that as you start running these systems they're a little slow or they're more than than fast enough for you um, then within here we can change the amount of ram that we are allocating this machine and so I'll just leave this one at four gigabytes for now. But if I'm finding that it's still a little on the slow side, then I can bump it up a little more. And if I find that's more than adequate or but another system is slow, then I can reduce it and reallocate some more to my other virtual machine. So that's how you can do this. And of course, the green means that for this machine, it should be fine based upon how much your host machine has, because you'll notice here it says that I have 12 gigabytes. But this is assuming that we're only running this one machine and we're not running multiple different machines. So now we want to go to the processor tab and all modern processors are going to have multiple different cores. And by default, when you set this up, it only allocates one core to this virtual machine. And you'll notice that we can allocate multiple different cores. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to increase the amount of cores to four cores for both of these machines. And this is going to allow them to have more than one core to allow them to run a bit faster. So we're going to say OK. And then we'll go to the Windows 10 machine. We'll go to Settings. We'll go over to System. We'll go to Processor. And we will give this four cores as well. So we've gone ahead and we've set up and created our two virtual machines. And I've showed you the basic settings for the system, for the memory, and the processor cores. And I also showed you how to change the machine folder as well in VirtualBox. So if you have any questions about what we did, definitely let me know. If not, thanks for watching and I'll see you at the next video. Take care. Well, I hope that you enjoyed today's video and you learned a lot from it. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Now, if you're interested in taking this full course or just learning more about it, check out the video description down below because I've included a link where you can learn more about the course and enroll into it if you'd like. So again, thanks for watching my video. I appreciate it and I look forward to seeing you guys at the next video. Take care.